Hello everyone, welcome back to Carlos Cooks again. I know it's been a long time since my last video and I do apologise for that. It has been difficult to get ingredients from the supermarket for obvious reasons, um, but I'm back now. Um, and today we're going to make um, a Serbian cheese flan, cheese pie. It's called um, Gibanitsa. Um, and I was first introduced to this by a Serbian colleague of mine who made it and brought it to work. And I tasted it and I... I've never tasted anything like it. It's beautiful. Um, and I wanted to taste it again. So um, when he asked a few of us to help him move house, we uh, managed to persuade him to get his wife to make it again for us as a lunchtime snack. And it really is beautiful. So I thought I'd make that for you today. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to use phyllo pastry and we're going to use a combination of cheeses for this cheese pie. Traditionally, I think it's made with goat's cheese or feta cheese. Um, and sour cream and eggs and phyllo pastry. Um, I'm going to keep true to that. We're going to use feta cheese mainly, but I've got some goat cheese to go with it. Um, we're going to mix in a cream cheese just to make it a little bit more malle malleable um, and some eggs. And then we're going to cook it in this dish here. So uh, what I've done first off is I've got the oven preheating. Uh, mine's a fan oven, so it's 180 degrees, 200 degrees for a normal for a normal oven. Um, we're going to cook it for around about 50 minutes at that temperature. It may take slightly less. Um, I know some people do cook between the 30-40 minute mark. Um, it depends how shallower uh, cheese pie you're making. But we've got quite a thick dish here. We're going to have quite a few layers, so uh, the 50 minutes should be about right. So. Um, First thing I'm going to do is I've got a mixing bowl and in the fridge I've got the cheeses. Now this is 400 grams of feta cheese which I've crumbled and 50 grams of goat's cheese I've just crumbled on top and it's quite a strong goat's cheese so I'll just add a, a little bit of extra flavour to it. So we're going to put that into our mixing bowl. And then into that, I've got a low fat cream cheese, but you could use a full fat one. This is just going to make it easier to mix up with the eggs. And I've got a whole tub of that. So 100 grams. Could use sour cream if you want to try to stay true to the uh, traditional recipe. Mix that in a little bit. Next up, we're going to whisk four eggs. And basically, what we're going to do is in the bottom of our pie dish here, um, I have cut a little bit of um, non stick baking paper just in the bottom just to make it easier for me to lift this out so we can see what it looks like later on and then we're going to put two layers of phyllo pastry in the bottom and we're going to butter that well coat it with our mixture and then just continue layering it up to the top where we'll put the final one on and we'll um, make sure we've got a good coating of melted butter on that and then it bakes in the oven. It's surprising how easy this is to make and how quick to make as well. Ideal hot dish if you've got guests coming round. And yet when you taste it, it tastes like it involves a lot more, but it's very easy to make indeed. That's the eggs. Next thing, seasoning, salt and pepper. I'm using pink rock salt. And some ground black pepper. As much as you want of that, depends on how, how you like it. Just, just to make it a little bit, I'm just going to put two 
dessert spoonfuls of olive oil in there as well. It's just going to break up the cheese a little bit. And then mix all that together. Evenly mixed. It doesn't have to be whisked smooth. If you're using the feta and the goat's cheese, it's not going to smooth out very well anyway. But all this is going to bake into the, uh, the pie, so don't worry about getting all the lumps out. Just make sure that you've got the eggs evenly distributed throughout the cheese. So this is what we're looking for. It almost looks like a very runny sort of scrambled egg, doesn't it, at this stage? So, so we'll just stick that to one side for a minute. And get our phyllo pastry sheets out. So I've bought a pack here that's got 12 largest sheets in. So we should be able to keep two sheets for the base, two sheets for the top, and then use the eight for the layers in between. Got slippery fingers now, I can't get into it, there we go. Now phyllo pastry dries out very quickly as soon as it gets out into the air, so it's important we work quickly with this. Try and find the right, that looks like it. So we're going to work very quickly with this and get it well buttered as we put it into the, the layers. So I'm just going to use a little bit of spray oil just on the base where we've got the paper just to stop that from And then we're going to put our first sheet. Now they're very thin and they're very delicate, so you have to go very careful to make sure you've just got the one. So we'll put one sheet in there, like so. Leave it hanging over the edges because we're going to fold these edges back over when we get to the top. the other way. Just push it down to the edges. And next, somewhere here, I've got some melted butter. So I've melted about half a stick of butter. And we've just got to give this a coating before we put our mixture in and you can dab the top and all around where we're uh, where we folded it over just so it doesn't dry out while we're making up the pie so I'm just going to get a spoon rather than a spatula because it's uh, be better. So now we're just going to spoon our cheese mixture in on the base and just spread it round evenly. You don't want it too thick, you just want a very thin layer because we've got a, a few layers of this uh, pie to make up. Next few sheets of phyllo. I've really good eyes to see if you've only got one sheet of this. I think I've got one there. Same again. Just push it down. Now, because we're working on the, the top layer now, you can actually fold that in 
just that layer though leave leave your top layer so you can fold that over afterwards but we're just folding that over and in there so that can all bake in more melted butter now if you wanted a healthier version of this you could use um, olive oil instead of butter for this this part but the butter is going to give it a beautiful flavor so I I'd rather stick with that just depends whether you want the more healthier version or not more layer of the cheese mixture next layer of phyllo we can have a few sheets left at the end of it. I've seen various ways of doing this. The version we're doing here where we're laying the uh, phyllo pastry sort of sheet by sheet and putting a layer of the cheese in between it seems to be the most common but I've seen other versions where they've actually taken the cheese mixture and put each phyllo pastry sheet into it and soaked it and scrunched it up and then placed that around in the base um, once you've put phyllo sheets underneath it and then uh, once it's all filled just drizzle whatever's left over it put some sheets on top and baked it that way so there seems to be alternatives to how you can do this I'm hoping once I get this up on the uh, internet my friend Goran and his, his wife Vethna will uh, pass comment and tell me how I've done whether I've done it properly or not I think we might get one more on top of that after that. It's not too too fattening the dish, the cheese is the worst part of it, the eggs are good for you phyllo pastry is always a better old, a better choice than normal pastry for any sort of pie so a lot less um, fattening than a one made with normal pastry, puff pastry or anything like that so it's not too bad but it's a very welcome snack when you've been working hard, you know, such as helping somebody move house. It really uh, revitalizes you. I think that's the phrase I'm looking for. It's uh, it feels like it's very carb heavy and satisfying, but obviously it's not. It's just the eggs and the and the cheese. And because the eggs are in there, it's going to puff up as it bakes. So uh, it doesn't matter if it doesn't get quite to the top of the dish. You're going to see a rise in it once it goes in the oven. So two sheets now. Put a little bit of olive oil into it.
make sure you coat it well because it is it's a fairly hot oven and it is going to cook in there for a while so the last thing we want is for it to burn So that's our last layer, now we're just going to fold over the last bits from the top layer that we had, just to finish it off. We'll dampen those down with butter as well. They haven't dried out too bad, so... It really needs to be coated well with the butter, really well. I think I've missed a bit there, yep. Yeah. Make sure you've covered everything especially around the sides because that's where it's going to get the hottest so make sure you've got plenty of butter around there and that is it now I've got my little leaves of paper I've I've left on the ends here as you can see just to help me lift the dish out afterwards but uh, that's the finished product so into the oven now I'm gonna put 40 minutes on the clock and then just keep an eye on it for the the final 10 minutes put that on the timer there we go. So we'll come back in about 50 minutes time and we'll see how it's done. Hello and welcome back everybody. Well the pie was in the oven for 50 minutes. It did take the full 50 minutes and it did puff up and dome up but as it's cooled it's collapsed a little bit but it's supposed to do that. So as soon as I took it out of the oven I just gave it a glaze with a bit of melted butter on top just makes it look a bit nicer. Um, just takes the crispiness out of the, the feeler pastry that's on, on top a little bit. It smells unbelievable. It just smells delicious. Um, so we're going to have a, a try of it now. It's probably been resting for about 10-15 minutes out of the uh, pie dish. Um, so just to let it settle a bit before we cut it. Um, so we'll have a slice of it. Um, now this one was the cheese one with the feta cheese, the goat's cheese, cream cheese, um, but they do um, do a sweet version as well. So I'd advise you to look in the internet, YouTube particularly, and um, have a look at the other recipes for Gibbonitsha because uh, there are many on there. Um, but let's have a taste of this one because the cheese one is definitely my favourite. So I don't know how to attack this yet, but let's just see if we can get a slice out without making too much mess. You'll find the inside has gone a bit sort of jelly like and this is still quite warm but as it cools it will firm up even more and I think once it's fully cooled you can stick it in the in the refrigerator but uh, let's just have a look at that so you can see there how it's gone inside and it smells amazing. So we've got the layers of phyllo pastry in there and on top and bottom. Um, it's all sealed and encased it in nicely so you know it's, um, it's a bit like a quiche really isn't it? So it's ideal for a buffet or a party snack. Um, but let's see how these cheeses all taste. And it's been so hard waiting for it to cool down. But uh, Let's just take this bit off the end here and try that and see. That is lovely and um, because of the feta cheese I used 
it's giving it that extra saltiness. On some of the recipes you find on the internet, you do see it actually stated as salty Serbian kibinitsa. So, uh, but it is lovely. Mm. I think my Serbian friends would be proud of me if I could invite them around to try some. We'll have to wait for a while for that though. Um, but that's delicious. Have a go at making that. So easy. I mean, the, the hardest thing is the weight while it's cooking. But um, yeah, definitely have a go at that. So I hope you liked um, watching the video on this. Um, you know, give it a thumbs up if you like it. And don't forget to put some comments in. If you're Serbian and you, you like Gibanitsa, you know, tell me um, some different recipes or flavours that you've done. And uh, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell notification icon if you want to know when I upload uh, further content. Um, but for now we'll call it a day, so I'll see you next time.